views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. I'm too sexy for my shirt, too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. And I'm too sexy for Milan, too sexy for Milan. Japan. Hey, welcome back everybody this week to Doing It With Styles. Uh, we appreciate you coming back and supporting uh, the show and the uh, station WWDB-TV. Um, you guys are why we're here. And today, um, I've got something very special. Uh, my guest today is George Chanos. Hi, John. Chanos or Chanos? Chanos. Chanos, okay. George Chanos. Um, George is the uh, former Attorney General for the state of Nevada, yes. uh, who was smart enough to get out of politics, and uh, also the author of a couple of books. The most recent is The Millennium Samurai. And, and I'll give you just a minute or two to talk about this book, because okay. there's something else I really want to talk to you about. Sure. So why did you write this book? Right. So. Um, the, I wrote this for my daughter. It, right. Essentially, I began writing in, in 2012 when I had a heart attack. Okay. And as a consequence of the heart attack, I was worried about my daughter's future. She was 16 at the time. So I wanted to download whatever knowledge I had acquired and leave it to her. So I began to write a letter. And that letter became very long. And ultimately, it evolved into my first book, Seize Your Destiny, A Roadmap to Success. Was essentially, which was essentially me downloading my life's history right. and what I thought contributed to whatever success I've had in my life, right? So that was Seize Your Destiny. And then I started looking, uh, realizing that my daughter's life was going to be very different than my life, that the next 30 years that she would live in would be very different than the prior 30 years that I had uh, uh, had my professional career during. So I began to look at the future. And when I started to look at the future, John, what I saw was extraordinary. Um, the changes that are coming are going to literally redefine life as we know it. And by redefine, I mean redefine. Like um, today, I'll give you a perfect example. Today and throughout history, um, we have thought of our species um, expanding through the interaction of a man and a woman, right, who give right. birth to a child, right. right? Well, there are some scientists in Japan that have taken a skin sample from the tail of a mouse, right? and they have mm -hmm. created what's called a gamete, which is a sperm and an egg mm -hmm. from just that one skin sample. So you take a fe female mouse, you take a skin sample, you create a gamete, an egg and a sperm, and they were able to reproduce offspring. They were able to reproduce pups from this mouse, and eight pups. And they had the DNA of the mother donor, right. donor mouse. <clears throat> now when you think about that, and, and the scientists that were involved in that said that it would be naive to believe that we won't be able to do this with humans. So the idea that you could take a skin sample from a single human being, whether male or female, and create a child from that single human being raises all sorts of medical, ethical um, implications that society, that could literally transform society and, and life as we know it, right? Um, Stuart, uh, futurist Stuart Brand says that we will bring woolly mammoths back to life, right? That we'll be able to find the DNA Froze, they've found frozen we, DNA. We, we, we already have. Yes. Of I mean, we found the, 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 the DNA. Yes, we have. Yeah. And they believe that we'll be able to bring these creatures back to life. There's a guy named Aubrey de Grey at the SENS Research Foundation who says that the first person who will live to a thousand is alive today, meaning that a baby born today that advances in genomics will extend life expectancy to a point where someone born today could live as long as a thousand years. Now, these people may be wrong in their calculations. They may be off. It may be, not be a thousand years. Maybe only 500 years uh, yeah. <laughs> or maybe 200 years. But that redefines life as we know it, right? And, and so 
Millennial Samurai is essentially a survival guide. It's a toolkit for the 21st century. It's, if I were to leave my daughter with only one thing, if I could give her only one thing, I would give her this book. More than money, more than a house, more than uh, the, the um, material things that I could leave her, I believe that the lessons in this book are more valuable. So I would recommend that parents give it to their children. I would recommend that grandparents give it to their grandkids. Um, that, that people who have read this book, if you go on Amazon and you look at the reviews, uh, the reviews are extraordinary. First of all, they're all five-star reviews. Yes. And, and the things that people are saying about this book, they're calling it a secular Bible for the 21st century. Uh, one gentleman called it a masterpiece. I mean, it's really getting some rave reviews. So. And, and I've just started reading it. And the, um, I have so little time, and I have always been, most of my life, a reader. I've always got three, four, five books going at the sure. same time. Um, and, and so I, I had to force myself to set aside some time to start reading the book. And I found that it is a really easy read. Yeah. The chapters are very short, one, two, three pages long. Right. Um, so it's like, um, okay, I'm just going to get to the end of the chapter and then I'll get back to work, you know. Well, okay, that was easy, one more chapter and then I'll get back to work. But um, the, the, I have just started, I mean, I've just barely gotten into the book and already I'm captivated and I can see I mean, it, what we've seen happen in our lifetime, just right. in our lifetimes. Right. I mean, we, we, we went from being planet bound to out to the stars. Yeah. And, and, um, and I'm disappointed because it stopped. You know, we, 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 don't, we could have accomplished so much yeah. more and we haven't. Yeah. But uh, I, I also highly recommend the book. I, I can't say enough about it. I'm sure that once I really get into it, um, I'll be even more excited. Yeah. However, having said that, this book is great. I want you to go get it. And this is, this is one of the things that uh, has impressed me about you as a human being. You are giving away one million copies of this book. Yes. You can go and download this book for free online. Yes. If you want a hard copy, you can go to Amazon, you can get it there and you can pay for it. But um, yes. to me, that shows a commitment that this is something valuable that you want to share. Yes. You didn't write it for the money. No. Uh, and, and, and that, to me, that says a lot. So well, thank you. Uh, on behalf of, of everybody that's downloading that book, thank you. Yes, and there have been over 12,000 people that have downloaded the book for free so far. So and, you, and it's only been out a couple months, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can go to millennialsamurai.com. Right. Millennialsamurai.com, and you can download the entire book, not a chapter, not, right. a, not a summary, the full uh, book for free at millennialsamurai.com. Some awesome. people like a physical book. They yeah, wanna, and, and which I do. I do too. Yeah, and so, and, and so for, if you want the physical book to, to even print out the book, at a Kinko's yeah. is going to cost you $50, right? right? So for $29, you can go on Amazon and you can buy the book and it's bound and it's beautiful and it's, it's handy and you can take it wherever you want. But if you, if you can't afford that, if you just want access to the information, go to millennialsamurai.com and download the book for free. And tell people about it and have other people do it. Right. And as I've said, over 12,000 people <laughs> have done that already and I'm, I'm hoping a million people will. Well, the... the <sighs> I, I'm not, I, I, this is going to be a segue into what I want to sure. talk about because by doing that, let's say that, that you get the million copies of, uh, out there and maybe only 100,000 people are affected by it. Sure. And when I say affected, I mean really understand what's in the sure. book and put it to some practical yeah. use. Yeah. So that's 100,000 people. Whose lives have changed. Which is going to affect your life. Yes. Your daughter's life. Yes. My kid's life. Yes. Uh, and and make it a little bit better place. Yes. Yeah. And so that's where I'm going with Limitless. Okay. Limitless is is something that you have created uh, to basically do that, just that. Right. Make this a better place to live. Yes. And to make all of us better human beings. Yes. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what the hell is Limitless? Okay. So, so the idea 
When I began um, trying to prepare my daughter for the future, and I began looking at the future, I, what I saw was extraordinary, and it surprised me and shocked me. And I thought that the, the level of change and the speed at which the world is changing. I mean, you watch the news today, John, and it's not the news that you and I grew up with, no. right? And Walter Cronkite was the most trusted man in America. Yes, he was. And today, you can't trust the media at all. At right. all right? You go to court, and, and, and the owner of the station is telling, well, nobody with any brains would believe what he's saying is yeah, true. Exactly. So, exactly. you yeah, know. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of misinformation, misdirection, and, and dishonesty. Yes. Um, and so anyway, you've got this tsunami of technological change that's on the horizon. It's going to affect employment. It's going to affect. Uh, it's going to create very significant disruption in a lot of different industries, <clears throat> right? And people already are economically insecure, mm -hmm. right? Something like seventy-eight per, or seventy-eight percent of the public, seventy-eight percent of the public has less than a thousand dollars in their savings account, right? That's one car accident, one injury, one hospitalization away from economic disaster. You know, disaster right? right. So, so, and that's the vast majority of people right. in this country, right? So, if that's the state of affairs today, and you've got this massive change of technology that's coming, that's going to create unemployment and disruption in a number of industries. So. Fast food, food workers are going to be replaced by robotics. Uber drivers, taxi drivers, truck drivers are going to be replaced by self-driving vehicles. There, there, there is right now, yes. today, in Las Vegas, a drone taxi service. Yeah. yeah. A driverless drone taxi service. Yeah. And, and I mean flying, yeah. not yeah, just exactly. in vehicles. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean they're in the testing stage. Yes. but. What you're talking about tomorrow is here today. It's here, it's here today. It's here. It's here today. So what this is going to cause is, is as it causes more disruption, people are going to find that they need help. They need guidance. They need inspiration. They need direction. They need mentorship, right? They need assistance, right? And, and the public sector um, government is not responding to that in the way that I need. I believe the government needs to respond to that. Now, as you know, I, I formerly served as Nevada's Attorney General. Right. Right. So I care about you know trying to enhance the public welfare, right, and trying to to um, move the country forward. We and, all benefit from that. Yes. yes. We all benefit yes. from from that exactly. type of situation. Exactly. Exactly. The more that we can educate, educate other human beings, the more self-reliant they become, the more um, empowered they become, the more formidable they become, the better it is, not only for them, but for everybody. Because they have reverberations. Their, their health and welfare and well-being reverberates through society, mm -hmm. right? So somebody who's poor, disenfranchised, hopeless, in despair, on substance abuse, might hold you up at a gas station, right? So if we don't help them, then we're not helping you, right? Exactly. So, so we need to help people so that we can raise all of our uh, um, standard of living and performance and, and level of happiness and satisfaction, right? That's what government should be about, right? That, that's supposedly the intent. Yes, but they're not doing it, no. are they? No. Right? They're highly dysfunctional. They're, they're par highly partisan and, and they're toxic. And they're not getting their job done, not the way that, th that it should be done. Public confidence in government is now measured in the single digits. Yeah. The, the Gallup poll in its 40 year history has never measured any public satisfaction of any institution, the media, the military, government, uh, lawyers, doctors, no one has been measured in the single digits until now. Today, consumer confidence in government is measured in the single digit, so less than 10 percent. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> so the public sector is not going to come to the rescue. The cavalry of government is not going to come to the rescue. The private sector 
of help and empowerment and you go to these programs and you pay a lot of money and you go to these prep, pep rallies and these guys are telling you get off your ass and do more work and work harder, work like I do. Or somebody might say, you know what, passive income. You need passive income. You should be investing in real estate. But you're thinking to yourself, you know, I have hardly enough money to pay the rent. I've right. got $1,000 in the bank, and this guy's up here telling me to invest in real estate. What, is he, like, uh, clueless as to what my situation is, right? So Limitless is basically an empowerment community that is dedicated to trying to enrich people's lives, to, trying to, to gathering people from all walks of life all over the world who have had success, right? So I've been fortunate. I've had success in my life, right? There are other people like me. There are many other people all over the world, some far more successful than I am, right? These people have something to give. They have something that they can give back and that they can add to, community and, uh, to the community. And as we get older, we want to do that. We want to give back. We want to help others, right? So what Limitless does, what I'm doing with Limitless, is I'm identifying those people around the world that have had great success and that want to give back. And I'm saying to them, can, can you speak to this audience, right? Whether you do it virtually um, and we do a Zoom call and I interview you like you're interviewing me today, right. or whether we do it live and they're on stage and you're attending a live event when COVID is over and you're watching these people speak, or they're part of a panel discussion, right? Or they're in a small working group and they're working with a group of people, right? And so the idea is to take the knowledge, like I downloaded my knowledge into my books, take the knowledge from these people, people ha that have done extraordinary things. Uh, I've got a Sherpa who is, has climbed Mount Everest 25 times, right? Yeah, that's a mind blower. It's a mind blower. So what, what has he learned and what can he teach us? Because you and I are never going to climb Mount Everest, right? No. But we can learn something from a man that has and from the people that he's met, that he's guided up, those, uh, uh, up that uh, mountain, right? What has he learned? What can he teach us? He can teach us about preparation. He can teach us about and preparation. He can teach us about overcoming our fears. Right. He can teach us about uh, the importance of a good guide, right? Um, there are many things he can teach us. There are billionaires, multimillionaires that have made fortunes in various industries, people that I know, people that want to share and want to talk about these things. What can we learn from them? Uh, a friend of mine is a guy named Sean Conlon. Um, he's the host of NBC's The Deed, right, which is a real estate program. Right. Sean came over to this country from Ireland with $500 in his pocket. He got a job as a janitor. He went on to go to night school and to get his real estate license. And then he began dabbling in real estate, a little bit at a time, right? And, and eventually, over a 20 or 30 year period, he built that into a billion dollar real estate empire. A billion dollars, with a B, right? How does a guy from Ireland with $500 in his pocket, who's a janitor in America, become a billionaire, right? And, and, and do a billion dollars in real estate transactions, right? What did he do? I mean, exactly, you know, how, what did, you're a janitor, you went to night school. Where'd you go to night school? What classes did you take? Right. You know, did you do any reading in addition to that? You got your real estate license. How was that? Was it hard? How'd you learn to do it? How'd you learn to pass it? Once you got the license, what was the first property you bought? You know, step by step, right. take us through it, step by step. I want to know the whole life. I and, want... and, and I may not want to invest in real estate, right. but I want to learn, I want to take those concepts yes. and, and, and apply them to what I do do. Yes. And, and hopefully, or with the, the intent of becoming successful, yes. whether it's, um, creating the, the, the best piece of artwork I can create yes. or writing the best book I can write yes. or, or, you know, just not necessarily wanting to make a billion dollars. Yes. So but I want to I take care of my family. I want to ensure that my neighbors also have a decent life. Right. So we'll bring in those authors 
and show you how to write that book that you wanted to write. Right. We'll bring in those artists. We'll bring in those photographers. We'll bring in those musicians and dancers. We'll bring in thought leaders. We'll bring in people who have had a journey that's that's ended with success right. or that's achieved great success in whatever field, right. right? And we'll bring in that diversity of knowledge and they will share their stories with the audience and the audience will be enriched by those stories. So that's part of the Limitless process. Limitless also uses technology, simple technology, like your phone, right? right? We all have these phones. We carry around them, them around with us everywhere. And right? God knows what they're going to be in 10 years. Yes, and, yeah. and, and today, we mostly use social media for more frivolous things, right. right? People are making fortunes by being funny or by being silly or by doing stunts or tricks or, or, or jokes. Um, what if you took the power of this phone and used it to its true potential, right? So we've learned more about the human brain in the last five years than in the last 5,000 years, okay? And scientists, neuroscientists like uh, Jill Bolte-Taylor at Harvard, a neuroanatomist, will tell you that you have the ability to control your thoughts, okay? You can change the way you think, right? Yes. So for example, if you are thinking negative thoughts all the time, right? You're constantly thinking negative thoughts. You are creating essentially pathways, neural pathways in your brain that act like super highways. So if, if negative thoughts are constantly traveling down these highways, you're, you're, you're wearing out a path in your brain. So when a new thought comes in, where is it most likely to travel? It's most likely to travel down that negative pathway that you've created because you look at everything negatively. You're, suspe exactly. you're suspicious of everything. You're skeptical of everything. Um, so new thoughts come in and they move down that pathway. Well, we create a new pathway, a positive pathway, right? Through daily reinforcement. So we will send you things on your phone that are positive, right? We will change that negative mindset to a positive mindset through practice and repetition. Const so you look at someone like Steph Curry, he plays basketball. He shoots something like 50% from the three point line, right? The way he does that is through practice and repetition. Yes. Practice and repetition. Lee Trevino once said, if you want to hit a golf ball like I hit one, it's easy. Just hit a million golf balls. <laughs> practice and repetition, right? So if we are constantly sending you positive information every day, and, you're, and we're asking you to practice positive affirmations, and we're asking you to develop habits, positive habits, like the habit of gratitude, right? You could wake up every morning and you could think about the three things that you're grateful for that day before you get out of bed. And you could do that every day. And I could send you a reminder on your phone to do that every day. And then you check off when you've done it. And so by practicing gratitude, which is one of the most transformative um, things you could possibly do, it gives you a different outlook on life. You begin to look at life differently. You begin to develop these different neural pathways. It's called neuroplasticity, right? right? And so we can actually, scientists have shown that we can actually change behavior. We can change thought processes through constant practice and repetition, through meditation, through mindfulness, right? So Limitless is about using this technology, using these new discoveries, changing mindsets, right? If you think about all the problems, I was having dinner with a friend of mine the other day, and he's in his 60s, and it was a very interesting conversation because he was having difficulty with his daughter. He was talking about his daughter, and uh, they had a disagreement about a political issue, right? It was about whether or not um, uh, we should tax people like Jeff Bezos and his you know, tr billions and billions of dollars. And the daughter is saying, yes, we should tax them and tax them heavily. And the father is saying, you know, I grew up in a capitalist environment. He earned that money. He gets to keep that money. Different mindsets, right? right? So they actually got into this argument over this, and it created a <clears throat> bit of a breach between them, right? That shouldn't happen, right? We should be able to have these discussions, especially between a father and a yes. child, right? We should be able to have these discussions without these things happening. He expressed his frustration, his frustration with me about not just the conversation with his daughter, 
but the state of the world. What, what's going on in the world? What are we going to do? How can we change all of this? How can we solve all of this, right? And, and you could tell that it was weighing on him. And I believe, I believe that the way that we change these things, you're not going to change the government by going and protesting and burning police buildings and, and burning police cars or, <clears throat> uh, or kneeling for the national anthem. You're not going to change things that way. Change needs to, rec you know, have you ever tried to change someone else? Have you ever had a friend? It doesn't work. Ha yeah. Have it you ever does not work. It does not work, does it? No. Right? I've had family members. I've had friends. I've had business associates. They might have behaved in a certain way that I didn't like, and I tried to change them. Yep. Right? I may have had relationships with people where I, you know, they left the, tooth, the cap off the toothpaste, <laughs> and I tried to change them. Right? And you can't change people. No. You know who you can change, John? Yourself. You can change yourself. You can change yourself. And so what we need to do, if we want to create change, we need to change ourselves. We need to get people on board with changing themselves. But that's how you change other people. Yes. Because they're going to look at you and they're going to go, wow, you know, that guy, I never see that guy down. Yeah. I always see him happy. Yeah. He's always positive. No yeah. matter what happens, yeah. no matter how many times he gets knocked down, yeah. he gets back up. Yeah. You know, I wonder what that guy's doing. Yeah. Why, how, did, how did he get that way? Exactly. And then they'll ask. Exactly. Or they'll see. Exactly. And, and, and that, I, I answered my own question because one of my questions were going to be, so how the hell do you get people to, to, to want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. You be an example. Yeah. And, exactly. And, and that's exactly. so many... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, self-help, uh, religion, all of that stuff tells you to be an example, yeah. but they don't too often why. we're the we're the wrong kind of example, right? And and, and, and and following the dogma or or you know just by going through these steps doesn't mean you you have to internalize that. Yes. Right. Yes. So so one of the things that's a very important concept. Um, I have a friend, um, Nathan. Uh, Carnage Corbett. Corbett. Um, he's the 11-time world Mu Muay Thai champion, right? Muay Thai champion. Um, pretty impressive, right. right? To 11 years being the world champion in anything, right? And, and he's read Millennial Samurai. He just did a video promotion on Millennial Samurai, and he talks about um, that he is a samurai, right? He's always been a samurai, and that he loves Millennial Samurai because of what it teaches, right? And one of the things, one of the things that he took from this book that he thought was most important for him was the concept of awareness, right? He said a samurai has to be aware. You have to be aware of your surroundings, yes. right? Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook, who used to be the uh, assistant to the president at Harvard, right? right? Very bright woman. She said, you can't change something that you are unaware of. But once you are aware, you cannot help but change. Okay? So one of the things that we're doing with Millennial Samurai and with, with Limitless is we're creating awareness, right? We're creating awareness about this tsunami of technological change that's coming. So we're telling people, get ready, you know? You gotta make some changes. You gotta sharpen your sword. Your sword is your brain, right. it's your mind. You've gotta improve your mind. The more you improve your mind, the more formidable you're going to be. Now, improving your mind isn't just you know, teaching you how to invest in real estate. Right. Improving your mind is teaching you to be more resilient, teaching you to be more adaptive, teaching you to be more confident, teaching you to, to have greater hopefulness and aspiration. Right? Mindset change. Critical change, thinking. Critical thinking. Teaching you how to critical think. Right. Uh, or think critically. Teaching you how to guard against misinformation. Right? Our brains are extremely malleable. Right? So we need to guard. And lazy. It. Yeah. And we're also, and we, you know, many of us are lazy. Right. So we, you, you don't get where you want to go by not moving. Right. You have to take action. Action is magic. Right? I saw a, a, an interview of a man who circumnavigated the globe in a sailboat, right? On his own, a one-man circumnavigation of the globe in a, in a small, tiny sailboat. And the interviewer asked him, how did you do it? 
And you know what he said? He said, I pushed off the shore in New York and I circumnavigated the globe. Action is magic. If I wouldn't have pushed off the shore, that, war, that, that term, action is magic, that I use came from that man, yeah. came from that interview. I pushed off the shore and I ended up going around the world. If he hadn't pushed off the shore, he never would have gone around the world. Exactly. Right? You have to take action, right? You have to get the book. You have to read the book. You have to attend Limitless, subscribe for Limitless, and attend, right? Watch the videos, read the material, get the emails, practice gratitude every day, take action, and you can transform your life. You can transform yourself, you can transform your mindset, you can transform your life. I know this because I've done this, right. okay? I've done it throughout my life, I've seen it work, I know it works, and, and, I, I, and scientists are telling me it, that it, it works. It, I, I, I know it works myself yeah. as well. Yeah. So um, the only uh, uh, qualms that I have is it doesn't sound like I can afford this. I mean, I've done this whole self-help thing. Yeah. I've done okay. you so, know, so all of this. So here's the difference. Here's okay. the difference. Limitless is not about making money. Okay? Limitless is not about making money. Limitless... Wait, it's not about making money for limitless. It's not about making money for limitless. Okay, we're gotcha. not trying to. Right. We're not trying to make a lot of money here. That's not the goal. Gotcha. The goal is to change the world. Okay. The goal is to empower people. Right? The goal is to make society a better place. The goal is to leave a legacy. Right? The goal is to deliver more value than we take. Right? So that's the goal. Right? So how do we do that? Right? You can't do it completely for free because you're putting on all these things. I right. can't afford to pay for everything. Right? right? So how do you do it and make it affordable? We've developed a subscription model. Right? So you sign up for a monthly fee of $9 a month. Nine dollars a month. That's it. That's it. That's no hidden cost. No, no that's you two. sign up and, and you no. got to buy these books. No, and you no, you don't do, have to buy okay. anything. You okay. don't have to buy another thing. Nine dollars a month is two cups of Starbucks coffee. Right. right? It's okay. less than two it's bucks. It's less than <laughs> right. Okay. So everybody can afford nine dollars a month. I can afford nine dollars a month. And if you can't afford nine dollars a month, then you communicate with us and you explain to us why you can't afford $9 a month, but that this is important to you, and we'll give it to you for free, okay? So it's not about money, okay? If you can afford to pay the $9 a month, we want you to do that. Of because course. Because then it contributes, it makes us be able to build a bigger organization, build a bigger operation, hire more people, provide more content, change more lives, right? right? So we do want a, a revenue stream, right? But. But if you can't afford it, we'll figure out a way to help you. We're structuring this as a public benefit corporation. So there's private corporations right. and there's uh, nonprofit entities. Right. Okay, nonprofit entities are completely nonprofit and private corporations are completely for profit. A public benefit corporation is a hybrid. Right? So it's a business. Is that an actual thing? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah public I mean benefit that. corporations are an actual thing. Gotcha. So it is a public benefit corporation, which means that we are a business, right. but we have a component of our business that is dedicated not to making money, but to advancing the public good for the public benefit. Right? So if you can afford to pay, we will have you pay. And if you cannot, we will figure out a way to help you anyway. Gotcha. Okay? All right? So that's the first thing. The other thing is that there are people that can afford to pay more, like Jeff Bezos, right? right. The young woman in, in, in San Francisco who is saying that Jeff Bezos should pay more in taxes. Right. I agree with that. I think he should pay more, more in taxes. So if you're wealthy and if you have a lot of money, then, then there are different levels of limitless that you can participate in. And, and what are some of the benefits of those levels? And why would you want to do that, right? So for example, instead of let's say $9 a month, you have a family and you have five people, right? Okay, so uh, uh, nine times five is 45. It would right. cost you $45 a month, right? So we have a family package that's $29 a month, right? So you can invite up to five people for $29 a month, right? So uh, that's $30 times five, that's $6 a people. That's $6 a person instead of nine, May, right? may, may I ask, yeah. I, 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 yeah. 
I, I hesitate interrupting you because you got some good stuff coming out of there. Yeah, go ahead. However, the 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 family pack. Yes. Do you have to be related? No. In other words, if I signed up for the family pack, no. I could invite, you could invite four, four other of people. Your friends. Okay, that's four of your friends. See, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, so you can put in four emails, five right. emails, and you just tell us what the emails are, and we will send out the package to those five people. That's so great. So now you got in for $6 a month right. instead of $9 a month. Right. Okay? So that's an option. But even so, th that, that's, that's a way of um, influencing four other people. Yes, exactly. And, exactly. And, and doing your part exactly. and giving those as a gift. Exactly. In other words. Exactly. You, you know, could sign up your grandkids. Yeah. You could sign up your you know, children, right. your aunts and uncles, your friends, your co-workers. We have business packages where if you're a business and you have 100 employees, you can sign up for a fixed fee per right. month that covers all 100 employees, right? If you have 1,000 empl employees, We'll put together a package for you for you to sign up all thousand employees, right? So there are, you know, groups and individuals that will pay more, but they'll get more out of it. But okay. the, the individuals is your um, focus. Yes. And, and, and so the more individuals, and, and like I say, as a business, I, I, can, I can absolutely see benefits yes. to a business owner saying, hey guys, you know, um, yes. I, I have been in, I've run uh, large construction companies and, and the, the more positive experience you can provide for your employees, yeah. the harder they will work for you. The, the, they're not going to run down the street for exactly. 50 cents an hour more exactly. because they are getting additional benefits that may not be, that are abstract. Yes. That, that I, yes. I love doing what I like. My favorite saying used to be, I love doing business with people I love doing business with. Yes. And, and so, yeah, maybe this is a little more expensive or maybe this is a little farther down the road or whatever, but there is a positive experience from that particular event. Yeah. Yes. So, John, there's, there's few things that you as an employer could do that would be a better investment of your money than to sign one of your employees up for Limitless. Because number one, let's talk about millennials, right? There are 85 million of them. They are the major component of today's and tomorrow's workforce. So get your butts out there and vote. <laughs> okay. So these, these young people, um, they value things other than money more than money. Yes. So, so the Pew Research Institute did a study that said that 40% of millennials would rather take a job making $40,000 a year that they love than a job that pays $100,000 a year that they think is boring. Just boring, yeah. not even hard, right. just boring, right? So they'd rather have $40,000 a year at a job they love than $100,000 a year at a job that bores them, okay? That's a very different mindset than prior generations. Yes. Okay. All right. So but that's it, that was that was what we were conditioned. Yes. To be. Yes. And 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 you know yeah never mind that that. <laughs> no no yeah <laughs> no. no you're right so 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 the point is that if you have these young people working for you and you're their employer right and you're signing them up for a program like this. And it's costing you less than $9 a month because you're signing up 20 or 100 right. or whatever. might be costing you $5 a month, right? You're signing up all these people, right? These young people that value intangibles more than money. They, ba they value things that are interesting. They right. value things that are going to empower them. They value things that are going to enrich their lives in other ways, right? They're going to value that, and they're going to look at you as an employer, and they're going to say, he gets it. He's the kind of guy I want to work with. Of course. Right? So, and you'll go the extra mile. You will. And you'll put out the extra effort, and, and, which then benefits everyone yes. around you. And we will send those employees back to you, and they will be smarter, yeah. and they will be more dedicated, and they will be more mindful, and they, would, and they will be more aware 
right? So they'll be better employees. They'll be more creative. They'll be more collaborative, right? They'll be uh, better people, frankly. And so now you're getting a workforce. We're enhancing your workforce and we're creating more uh, uh, loyalty and, and, and better morale. But it, it's, not, it's not just, uh, you use the word loyalty, and I think it's more than that. It is a, a, a joint involvement in our own um, survival. Right. And growth. Right. And, and, and by being the best person that I can be, right. I'm forcing you to be the best person you can be. Right. And you are then in turn forcing me to be a better person. Right. And, 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 and recognize those, recognize what really is important. Right. And, so, and, and what benefits us as human beings. Right. So who are you hanging out with? Who, who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you networking with, right? Um, and if it's the wrong group of people, then that's not going to help you in life. Right. But if it's the right group of people, that can be transformative in your life, right? You may find business partners. You may find relationships. Um, you may find uh, you know, the person that you want to marry. You may find the person you want to do a deal with, right? Um, you may need a graphic artist, and there will be one there. You may need a videographer, and there will be one there. You may need an accountant, and there will be one there. Right. So you're going to make all these connections, right? So for the same reason that we join churches, or we join the Chamber of Commerce, or we join a fraternity, or we join a team, um, we, want it, we, we thrive in communities. We learn, we teach, we give, we receive within communities, these communities. Limitless is one of those communities. The difference between Limitless and other communities is that we have a very specific purpose. And the very specific purpose is to turn your life into the best life it can possibly be. To enrich you, to change your mindset, to make you look at things differently, including yourself, right? And, and your job and the world and other people around you, right? We transform the way people think into a way that more aligns, that aligns more properly and more fully with what it is they want, right? What do you want? You, you may not want money. You may want to be an artist, right? We'll help you become an artist. You may want to, you know, sail that boat around the world. We'll help you develop the mindset that's required to push off the shore in New York and to take that voyage, right? So we're transforming the way people think, right? Now you can go to college and you can spend four years in college and you can you know, rack up $100,000 in debt that's going to weigh you down for the next several decades, right? Or you can pay $9 a month right. and we will transform the way you think. The, the and I, uh, I can't help it. I, I, the, the whole college experience the only thing that it taught me was if I want to learn something, it's up to me. Yeah. That, that it, it did give me some tools on how to study or, or how to, uh, but, but it was like what I learned from my college experience was nothing compared to the little bits that I took away from that and learned in my life. Right. And, and uh, so, it wasn't a waste. No, no, it's not. It, it, it wasn't a waste, no, no. and I don't mean to sound that way. No, and I don't, and I don't believe that either. But, yeah. but, but, you know, think about the education system, right? And how it was created, and when it was created, right? So it was created at the turn of the century for the industrial revolution. Exactly. America was an agrarian society. We were farmers, right? Right. That's what we did, right? All of a sudden comes my the, grandparents. Yep. So. <laughs> Along comes the Industrial Revolution. And the government, the American government says, okay, we've got an Industrial Revolution. We need to be able to transition our economy from an agrarian economy to an industrial economy. We need workers. We need people to know how to work in a factory, how to you know, take direction, how to operate a machine. We need to train these skills, how to read and write, right? So we trained people for the Industrial Revolution, right? Well, now we have a technological revolution that is going to dwarf the Industrial Revolution. And, and it, it, it's, and I think 
uh, personal, this is just a personal yeah. opinion. <clears throat> it goes beyond what we think of as technology. Yeah. It, it, it's, I mean, look at, 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 okay, when I was younger and, and we first started in the space program, yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that we have today, medical uh, uh, innovations and stuff, came out of that space program. Absolutely. Our cell phones, hand calculators, yeah. that all came from that. Yes. And, and I don't think that anyone involved in that at that time really anticipated what was no going to happen. No way. Just like we can say, or you, you've said a couple times, that this tsunami's coming, yeah. but I don't think that we can fully comprehend we can't what that is going to mean. John, if I went back in time to 1969, when NASA put a man on the moon, 50 years ago, right? And I walked into that room at NASA, I would have seen a room full of computers, yep. right? A room, the entire room would have been filled with big computers, right? And if I walked into that room, and I went back in time 50 years, and I walked in with this phone, and I said, hi, gentlemen, to all the NASA scientists, the brightest minds in the country at the time. I said, hi, gentlemen, I'm from the future. And in the future, and this phone that I've got that I'm carrying has 100,000 times the computing power yep. of everything you've got in this room, 100,000 times in my pocket. And guess what? Everyone's going to have one. Your children are going to have one. Everyone's going to have one of these in their back pocket. Those scientists would have looked at me and they would have said, this guy is Needs crazy. Needs to be locked up. This guy is a crazy man, right? <laughs> yeah. And that was just 50 years ago, right. right? So now, look 50 years forward. Look 50 years forward and where do you think Dude, we're gonna go from here? 20 years. So let me tell you where we're gonna go. In 20 to 30 years, your neural cortex, according to Ray Kurzweil, the head of artificial intelligence for Google, your neural cortex will be connected to the cloud and you won't have to go to your phone to find the answer to a question. You'll just think of the question and the answer will come to you instantaneously, wirelessly, through the cloud. Okay? Nanobots will be pulsing through your bloodstreams, according to Kurzweil, curing all of our diseases 30 years from now. The human brain, uh, in, uh, machine intelligence, will be a billion times, a billion times more capable than the human brain. That means that the human brain is incapable of even imagining what that billion times intelligence will mean because it's a billion times what we can contemplate, right? So how can we even imagine it? Futurists say that if you are talking about the future and it doesn't sound like science fiction, you don't know what you're talking yeah. about, right? So this is our future and John, it's coming like a freight train. It's, it's literally coming like, it's here. As you said, it's here. Okay, okay. Ten, 10 years ago, yeah. I could not be doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. With, with, with the technology, it, it, five years ago, yet just barely, but 10 years ago, no. I, I, I mean, it, it's just, it's amazing. So let me ask you something. Sure. How are you gonna keep up? How are you gonna keep up over the next 10 years if you don't have a community of support something like Limitless that is delving into all of these developments, keeping you aware, creating awareness, showing you, John, here's what's happening. This just came out. Convariant just developed a robot that can sort 10,000 SKUs at Amazon faster than any human being, right, with 99% accuracy. That information, that, that just happened last month. Yeah. That information, before that, no robot could do that. Today, a robot can do that. That information tells you something. It tells you what is Amazon going to be employing over the next 10 years? Are they going to have jobs of people sorting boxes? No, those jobs are gonna be gone. They're gonna be done by robots. When they build their new factories, are they going to build them for human beings to walk down the aisles and nope. sit at desks and sort packages? No. They're so what are those people gonna do? Well, that, so this is the question. So, so they're go we're going to have to adapt and we're going to have to change what we do. So there will be new industries. There will be incredible new industries. You're in one of them, yes. right? You're doing video work, right? You're putting together shows like this. There will be an increased need for education. Education will evolve like programs like Limitless. There will be others that, that are similar, right? 
and, and people like you that are providing video and that are doing interviews and that are facilitating all of that are going to be in greater demand. There will be more and more of these people that need your services. The, the, but the abilities, or, or let me say your grandchildren yeah. or my grandchildren, yeah. their skill set is going to have to be more esoteric and less technical. We, pretty much. So, or or, or so, more... Well, well, it's going to have to be more human. human. So, so, okay, so, yeah, good, good word. So here's yeah. the thing. Machines cannot do everything that you can do. Right. Right? So what is the difference? What is it that a machine can do, or what is it that, better yet, what is it that you can do that a machine can't do, okay? When we're talking about sorting packages, you can't keep up with a no. machine. When we're talking about physical strength, you can't keep up with the machine, right? So there are certain things that machines are always going to be able to do better than you, right? But let's say, John, that I come in and I say, you know, I'm having, I'm, I'm just not feeling well. I, um, I, um, I don't have the uh, enthusiasm for my work. Um, I'm feeling depressed. Um, a machine's not going to be able to help you with that. The machine's going to be able to say, or, 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 Going to do blood tests and yeah, say, you know, oh yeah, you. you're in perfect health, or or di yeah, or yeah, it might right. diagnose you and say you're in perfect health, or it might diagnose you and say that you're suffering from this uh, mood disorder, right? And they may be able to diagnose, right, right, it, right, yeah. But when you're lying in that hospital bed, or when you're, you know, s uh, sitting in the corner and 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 not doing what you need to do, the person that the the, the way that you're going to get out of that is through the the compassion and the affection and the empathy of other human beings. Right. Coaches, counselors, psychi psychiatrists, psychologists. These, it's going to take humans to lead other humans, to comfort other humans, to console other humans, to collaborate with other humans. Here's a big issue for, for human beings, right? Collaboration, right? So today, um, you look at companies like Google, and they will tell you that the top skills for an employee at Google, Google to be successful or for them to hire you, complex problem solving, critical thinking, an ability to collaborate with others, team building, leadership, these are the skill sets that they are looking for today. Right. These are the skill sets that they will want tomorrow because these are the human traits, right? They've got workers from all over the world, men, women, uh, uh, people who you know, uh, uh, have different gender designations, right? People who speak different languages, people who come from different countries, people who have radically different backgrounds. How do you pull from all of these people? Who's the leader? Who's the collaborator? And Who's the coordinator that can coordinate with these people and draw the best out of them, yes. right? That's a skill set. Right. That's not a machine. No, you that's, can't. That's there, a human there, there being. There isn't a machine that can do that. Exactly. So, so you want to be taught to be able to do that. You want to be taught how to work with other people, how to get the best out of them, how to motivate them, how to console them, how to help them, right? Humans helping humans will always be a need, yes. right? So that's a growth industry. Um, there, there are many growth, you'll identify growth industries. Asteroid mining. Today, nobody's asteroid mining. Tomorrow, huge numbers of people will be involved in asteroid mining. You know why? There's a company today called Planetary Resources that's uh, been funded by uh, Larry Page and Eric Schmidt of Google, okay. right? They've identified a moving asteroid called Davida. There are roughly 5,000 of those asteroids within Earth's orbit that are mineable, right? Davida, they believe, has $100 trillion worth of precious metals. $100 trillion. The US GDP is $18 trillion. The world GDP is $73 trillion. This is one asteroid with $100 trillion worth of precious metals. Do you think that's going to be a growth industry? I think it's going to be a growth Absolutely. industry. Absolutely. And guess what, John? That's not even the most valuable thing on that asteroid. You know what the most valuable thing on that asteroid is? 
Take a guess. Diamonds. I'm drinking it. Water. Water. I was going to say water, but I can't. You know why? All of NASA's 135 space missions have been fueled by hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen and oxygen. Water contains hydrogen and oxygen. Yep. They can break down the, the water and they can create rocket fuel up on the asteroid. Now, today, to take a ton of rocket fuel up to the asteroid requires 10 tons of <laughs> rocket fuel that you have to burn right. in order to carry that payload of one ton of rocket fuel. It makes outer space colonization impossible because you can't take enough fuel up right. to go on to Mars and Jupiter and Venus and these other planets, right? But if you can get up to where Earth's gravity is no longer an issue and you can refuel on a gas station on this asteroid, you can go on to Mars, you can go on to, to Jupiter, right? So this enables outer in, uh, interplanetary uh, exploration and colonization. So that makes that more valuable than the hundred trillion dollars worth of precious metal. Duh. So this is going to be an ass this is going to be an industry, right? Now how can you profit from that information? Well, you might start educating yourself to become part of that industry. Or let's say that I had said to you, John, in the early nineteen hundreds, I've heard about this company called Coca Cola, and I think it's gonna be really big. Right. Right? And you had never heard of it, right? And I said, you know, John, I'm buying some stock in Coca-Cola. I think you ought to buy some stock in Coca-Cola, right? Well, John, you've just been told about planetary resources. You've just been told about a company that Larry Page and Eric Schmidt of Google are investing tens of millions of dollars in. You've just been painted a picture about an industry that is definitely going to become a huge industry. So now, when you see planetary resources go public on the New York Stock Exchange, you're probably going to buy some shares. No doubt. Right? So now you've learned something. You've learned something that, that is potentially valuable. Back in the day when Bitcoin first came out, right? The first guy that used Bitcoin as a currency gave a pizza delivery guy hundreds of Bitcoin in exchange for the pizza. Hundreds of Bitcoin. Wow. Because it was, nobody was using it right. yet. It right, had right, no right. value that had been established. Today, that pizza delivery guy, if he had that Bitcoin, it would be worth millions of dollars, right? So, because I think the, the the last I saw was like about 20, five grand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Wow. Yeah, per bitcoin. Per coin. Per yeah. coin. This kid got a hundred of them. Wow. Right now, if I were telling you about bitcoin twenty years ago, that would have been information that could have been life changing for you. Right. Right. Well, every day there are new things coming out that could change your life. Right. But how do you know about them? How do you find out about them? If you're not, you, you, the, the reading that I had to do to write this book, I had to go into the future, I had to research the future, I had to spend years reading everything I could to try to find out about the future, and I put it into this book. Half of the things that are in this book, I did not know before I began writing the book. So when you read this book and you read the whole thing, half the things that are in there are things you, did not, you do not know today, right. okay? So you're gonna learn a tremendous amount about that. Um, but now imagine if you're part of Limitless and every day I'm sending you new information on your phone. I'm sending you articles, I'm sending you videos, I'm sending you new apps for your phone, I'm sending you uh, new shortcuts, new things that are being discovered. I'm telling you about companies like Planetary Resources. I'm telling you about things like Bitcoin that are new, that are brand new, that you can get in at, at you know for cents, yeah. right? That anybody can afford. And if they take off, they're huge, right? So how do you stay in that loop, right? How do you, in a, in a society where there's information overload, right, where there's tons of information, how do you find the breakthrough knowledge, the gems, the needles in the haystack in this sea of information and disinformation? How do you find what you need to know? So essentially, limitless is a filter. Is a filter. It's it's the curation. It's the it's 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 our group curating this information. We're the ones that are going out and reading all the books and all the articles that you don't want to read, right? That you don't have time to read because you're too busy. Right. Because you've got five books already that you're trying to finish, right? 
So you don't need to do that. You don't need to do any of that. You, 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 you donate two cups of coffee a month, a month to Limitless, and you're getting that information fed to you on a daily basis. And then you're able to go to events, and you're able to interact with all these other people. Will, will, will I be able to um, filter that information? In other words, uh, hey, Limitless, I'm not really interested in this yes. part just this part yes okay yes so yep. more of this less of this yes. so i can yes. kind of pick and choose what yes. i'm interested in yes yes and so some of the how long have you been how long have you been working on putting this together uh, a couple of years yeah a couple of years and i'm still working on it well I, I, yeah yeah and and then i don't i also don't want to mislead anybody but you so are you are currently taking uh uh like reservations yes, for subscriptions yes. we're having people sign, sign up, up here and, and yes, we'll let yes. you know when all yes. that's ready we're not taking any money from anybody right. yet but we're yeah. having you sign up to uh become part Be of our mailing list right right so that when we launch which will be at the end of the year um or the beginning of next year when we launch you will receive an email that says you know we're launching and so you can sign up now without any obligation Soon you'll be able to actually sign up and subscribe, and when that happens, we'll email you and tell you that you can do that, or it'll be on our website at limitlessthinking.com. Right. All right. And you'll or you'll see a promotion for Limitless, and you'll be able to click on a link, and you'll be able to sign up. <clears throat> um, I want to be clear that the events are not included for the nine dollars. Yeah, I, I I didn't see how they could be. Yeah, but you have access. Right. You have access. If you're not a Limitless subscriber, you cannot come to our right. events. But if you are a subscriber, you have access to the events. And depending on your subscription level, if you are a nine dollar subscriber, you'll get a discount off the cost of the event. Right. If you are a corporate subscriber who's got a hundred people in the program, you'll get a different discount right. off the event. Right. So um, there are different levels of participation. The bottom line is that you will get tremendous value for your $9 a month. You'll have an option to engage in further involvement and further activity at, at different price points that are all intended to be as affordable as possible. The main revenue source for Limitless is not what we charge you. The main revenue source for Limitless will be the corporate sponsors. Right. So we're going to try to get corporate sponsors that are underwriting all of this so that we can pass this along to our, our, our uh, customers at a more affordable rate. Okay, then let me ask this. Yeah. Uh, that, that brings up a question in my mind. Uh, you're, of course, uh, familiar with Consumer Reports. Yeah. Okay. Um, they put out all this information on different products and stuff like that, but they do not take any money from any of those yeah. companies. So if you are going to have corporate sponsors, how picky are you going to be about which corporate sponsors you take? Real picky. Okay. Real picky. So um, we're going to... Because if General Motors comes in and says, hey, we're going to give you all this money, but we want you to put this out to all your people and tell them about our new cars. Yeah. Or, no, we're not going to. Okay. So, so for, I didn't think so. No, but, no. Yeah. So, so you're. We're not going to. Um, what the corporate sponsor gets, okay, isn't us pushing out advertising to our uh, um, subscription base, right? We're not going to push out, uh, you know, Visa's new credit card or, right. or General Motors' new car right. to our, our our client base. What we're going to send out to them is empowerment information, right? But General Motors will have a presence at our event, right. right? So they'll have a sign at our event. They'll be there. The the company logo may be attached to our emails, right. so you'll see the logo, Which is, it, it, and it and makes perfect sense. Yeah. So you'll right. know right. you'll know that General Motors cares about this, right. right? This message of empowerment, you know, has a General Motors logo on it. Right. So you'll say, okay. They underwrote this message. So it, right? it's a little bit like uh, NPR or you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. National Public Radio yeah. Or, or, yeah. or on a, on a different, similar on a, on a much more modern. And George, I'm I'm sorry, but we're running out of time. I, right. <laughs> you know yeah. how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I, you're welcome back here anytime. Thank you. Uh, when we get closer to uh, and and I, and I have, as I told you earlier, already started sending out. Hey, you you need to check this out. I've sent the uh, link out to the oh, good. to the uh, address, so hopefully you'll get something 
I, I know that I will get some benefit from it because my friends will be better people. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, so maybe it's kind of selfish. But, yeah. Well, and um, any young people that you know, yes. should, you should want them. Oh yeah, up. no, no, no. And I and and, and I am. I'm, my I'm, daughter will be part of this. Yeah. My nephews and nieces will be part of this. And you know, this is what I'm doing for my family as well. So so, man, there is so much more I want to talk about. Um, it it is is there. Is there a way to introduce this to the school systems? I hope so. What? I hope so. I hope that uh, I hope that teachers will use this. Um, there's no there's no reason they can't use it. Right. And um, you know, if schools, if there were teachers and schools that wanted to use this, we would develop a program where they could use it with their students and right. with their schools. And we would try to do it as as either at no cost or at minimal cost right. for the schools. So right. we're totally open to that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It's not that we want we don't want to compete with education. No, we, no, no. We want to augment exactly. education it, because right? you, you still have to have the basics. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Listen, the more reading, writing, arithmetic. The more yeah. education, the better. Right. You know. God bless the teachers of the world that are out there helping people and and trying to improve their right. lives. Um, they're limited in what they can do. They they are working off a hundred year old model. Right. And and we're introducing a new model. And if they want to plug into the new model or they want to have access to the new model, you know, we would love to, to do that. Okay, so here's, here's, here is a, a new model for you, yeah. right? The public education system sucks. Yeah. We all know that. And, yeah. and, and, it's and, limited. And, yeah. So um, a lot of people are sending their kids to private school. Yes, charter school. So why not a limitless school? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Yep. Yep. There's no, there's, there's no, there, the, the, the concept behind Limitless, John, yes. is that there are no limits. Right. Right? So we can expand in any direction. You know, that's where you came up with the name yeah, Limitless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are no limits. Yeah. Right? So if it makes sense, and, and so think of our mission. Our mission is to empower humanity, right? Our mission is to make people smarter, more capable, more formidable more happy, more resilient, more adaptive, right? That's what we're here for. So whatever we can do that will advance that mission, that's, we're open to that. Cool. Well, we, you know, of course, I'll do whatever I can do to help. I'm, I'm happy to. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate your support more well, than you know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, dude, we're all in this together. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay, and, and I'm sorry, but we got to cut this All off. Right. I, I thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having um, me. And I hope that uh, a few of you out there got something out of this. I know I, every time I talk to George, I, I find something new and, and exciting. Um, God, guys, there, there's just so much potential here. Check it out, and it's LimitlessThinking.com. LimitlessThinking.com. Dot com. And uh, just... E even the landing page on the website is cool. Yeah, I, I, that was I, that was the first thing I thought. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, and they can go to millennialsamurai.com yes, and download I, I, the book for free. Absolutely, get the book too. So yes. um, anyway, thank you again. Uh, thanks for coming back, and hope to see you next week. Don't know what I got going on next week, but we'll figure it out. Uh, and just remember, if you're going to do it, do it right, do it big, do it with styles. Thank you. Thank you. Nice work, John.